The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask is well known for how different the story it told compared to the rest of the series. Together with a time limit and apocalyptic story, numerous side quests that expanded upon the world of Termina, and of course, its well-made cutscenes to string them all together. However, despite having many well-put-together cutscenes already, a number of these were still cut. Some rather minor, many rather bizarre, and others even showcasing an older version of existing areas. So today on Cut Content, we look and explore the unused cutscenes of The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. Before we begin, Please hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell too to further support us and keep creating new videos. The first of these many cutscenes we'll be looking at is the beta opening of the game. Now normally when you start the game, you are treated to a black screen with text over it. However, this is just an overlay. If one removes the black screen, there's actually a cutscene right behind it that was playing the entire time. It is a really crudely made cutscene that starts off by rotating and zooming out of Link's face followed by showcasing various areas of the Lost Woods. It's clearly an unfinished cutscene as the trees are cropped at the top, something we aren't supposed to see, and shows off too many empty plains in what is supposed to be a densely packed Lost Woods. The way the camera zooms out of Link's face may be trying to depict a technique to try to showcase Link's emotions going into the game. Potentially, how he looks and feels about losing his close friend Navi at the end of Ocarina of Time. Though showing an expression like depression and sorrow on N64 hardware may be a bit difficult. So, if this theory is correct, this may be why it was cut. Now, we are familiar with the Adolwa boss battle in Woodfall Temple with him jumping down. However, a very odd unused cutscene exists here, where instead of Adolwa jumping down, it is the cutscene of Twinmold from Stone Tower Temple that plays here instead. Twinmold clipping right through the walls and everything even. The obvious theory is that Odola being the first boss might have been used as the test room for other bosses too, in which Twinmold was one that was left over here. The other theory is that maybe Twinmold was actually intended as the original first boss, which would fit having Worms be the boss of a swamp dungeon and could have been one that punctured through walls and poked out for a surprise attack. But if one proceeds with the battle, the game does freeze up upon defeating one of them. Now the Chamber of Giants is one place that Link goes to after each dungeon in the game. It's very foggy and you only slightly see the giant here. However, a number of unused cutscenes exist for this chamber that has little to no fog and depicts the giant very clearly. Their models being the one that is used for holding up the moon near the end of the game. They appear to be early versions of the final cutscenes, with everything from small visual differences to the giants being in the scenes originally, and overall lacking polish. And there are none or very little of the dynamic camera angles that accompany the final versions. Some of these are also very dark too, which may indicate the time of day would have affected these scenes itself. Some have text that is very similar to the final games, but others seem to be blank entirely. Now on to Romani Ranch, which has a surprising number of beta content within its unused cutscenes actually. The first we'll look at is this. The countdown being used here over Kremia petting a cow indicates that this is a setup for a minigame, but it locks up here. However, if one did fix that problem by removing the cutscene header, it leads into the alien shooting minigame that we have in the final game, but this version of the minigame is quite different. Only three aliens are around versus the final game's many aliens. The milk bar music is playing too, a much more fitting theme for a minigame in my opinion, and the fact that the area itself is differently laid out. This cutscene as such uses an early version of Romani Ranch here. Once we are able to walk around, we can see this crack on the wall of the house here. Something not in the final game. This is actually a hole bugs can go into like they would in Ocarina of Time. No other hole like this exists anywhere in the game, and thus this feature was actually cut. In fact, this is also seen in the pre-release screenshots. The roof also has a random crate too, but the strangest part is when it turns nighttime. Instead of being infested with aliens like the final game, it is instead infested with stall children. All of them are still on the same trajectory to the barn like the aliens were, but can't pass through the walls like them. 
It's possible the original intention was to make more of a zombie parody here, where they wish to eat cows and potentially even Romani's brain. Would explain why Romani is so damn brain dead the next day you meet her, if you fail to protect the barn that is. But seriously though, it would have made it a lot easier if the stalled children stayed instead of the aliens. The one other cutscene for the ranch is this one that focuses on Mama's house before showing the whole ranch. It might have been originally done as a more vague hint of where you should visit first so you could get Epona back since this is the house that actually holds her. Now East Clocktown has a rather curious cutscene that pans down from Clock Tower while showcasing the jugglers, Kremia, and the scientist. These characters being here and all together is what is the strange part of this since the latter two are from completely different areas. If one does explore this version of East Clocktown this scene is using, we get a better look at these characters. However, this cutscene reminds me of the ending of Ocarina of Time when you had a bunch of random characters gathered together celebrating. Seems this may be the case here too, as it is set to transition into the Milk Bar cutscene for the ending of the game, so this cutscene was part of the original ending actually. Northern Clocktown also features a slightly different entry cutscene into the area. Nothing really looks different from first glance, but has a more greenish tint to the sky, a lot like the early screenshots depicted. As well, the positioning of a lot of objects and characters in the scene are slightly different too. Basically, this is a slightly early version of the area. Now in Majora's Mask, there are five major great fairies in the game, each giving you a special reward upon collecting all the stray fairies within an area. You gain the magic meter, charge spin attack, double defense, double magic, and the great fairy sword. Short simple text and you got him. However, unused cutscenes exist in the data where the great fairy, standing upright for a change, takes Link to a white void and trains him to use these set abilities. Link here is taught the spin attack and she requires you to perform it in front of her too. And he also did these sit-ups in order to get double defense. However, for gaining the magic meter, double magic and the great fairy sword, Link simply stood in front of her in this void and got it. Those cutscenes may have not been completed yet. But alas, this concept may be what later influenced the training that Link got from the Hero's Shade in Twilight Princess when learning new abilities. The one oddity is that when Link gets double defense, he returns to the fountain as Fierce Deity Link. It's hard to say why, but my loose theory is that this may be a leftover from when the Adult Link Mask was a feature, and to be used more frequently throughout the game. Thus, the double defense may have been a feature for that version of Link originally only. But again, a very loose theory here. And lastly, when you go to the moon near the end of the game, normally no cutscenes play for entering it, nor do any cutscenes play for any of the three trials. However, it seems there was a cutscene planned for each of these. First is entering the moon, which has a sort of incomplete cutscene that depicts the sun in a rather broken manner here. The scene goes on to focus on Majora before it zooms out all the way to even smear the scene beyond its bounding boxes here. Clearly a very unfinished scene. But as well complete entry cutscenes into the trials too. They are programmed to run but apparently additional programming exists to disable them. In Majora's Mask 3D however, the trial cutscenes were all restored and they are exactly like the ones that are cut here. For as intricate and amazing as the cutscenes of Majora's Mask were, it is fascinating to see how it could have gone even darker or weirder in some cases, but in the end with what we got, it truly developed this game as the unique package that we know it for. And Majora's Mask is full of these many strange and unused ideas, many that I have covered, and more that I plan to cover very soon. So hit the subscribe button for I plan to be back with more Zelda and other games cut content soon. Hit the like button and comment below on if you'd prefer to see any of these cutscenes in the final game. So everyone, thank you for watching.